Welcome to Jesus Global Ecclesia one more time today. Mercy night and miracle and power night. I believe it's a night of divine visitation for everyone whose spirit is ready. I'm excited in my spirit and I just want to introduce to you today what God has in store. For the Lord God is the sun and shield is the light upon me, enlightened by parts and is my defense. The Lord will give grace anointing, power, strength, and it will give glory. It will give me dominion. It will give me honor. It will promote me. It will bring me into colorfulness. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. It is unrighteous for God to withhold from me good things that I desire. It is unrighteous for God to do it. But the Bible says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love in that you have ministered to the saint and still minister. So Psalm 84 verse 11. For the Lord God is a son and shield. Who is hearing God this morning? The Lord will give me the power. The Lord will give me the grace. The Lord will give me the unction. And it will give me glory. It will elevate me. It will beautify my life. And whether you like it or not, it is a confirmating statement. Confirmatory statement. No good thing. Good wife, good husband, good children, good health. Whatever things good. Good car. Good home. Good business. Good friends. Whatever good thing. No good thing will God withhold from them that are walking in uprightness. Which means he is withholding it from others. He can't withhold it from me. God cannot withhold elevation from you. One of the major qualifications is uprightness. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. This is a good way to start. Thank you, Jesus. Some of these things we cry for, some of these things we pray, some of these things we do a lot of spiritual gymnastics for are because we do not understand the equation of working with God. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek, let the kingdom agenda be your crazy priority. Let souls win it. Let the expansion of the kingdom, let the priority of God be your priority. And is righteousness enforcement of the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Seek it first. Let this be your breathing. Let it be your daily moment passion. What you live for constantly. Let this be your madness and all other things shall be added and that includes promotion all other things that the gentiles are seeking for all other things that the gentiles are seeking after shall be added promotion is your legitimate covenant but right you know if i tell you, you don't even need to pray for it it should come even if you have to there is a way it must be done with understanding they shall be added. So promotion is part of the addition. Let's hear from a wise man who enjoyed the promotion of God in Job 22 from verse 23. Hear wisdom from this mighty man, the greatest of all men in the East, the most promoted man. He was going, he's going to show you the secret code of the promotion of which God takes pleasure in the promotion prosperity of his servant. The elevation of those who serve him. It gives God pleasure. Why do you think he won't give you promotion? So if you are not experiencing supernatural, mysterious promotion, something is wrong with the equation of promotion in your life. Job 22 verse 23. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. You will be built up. You will be fortified. You will be elevated. You will be glorified. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacle. That's the code. Prioritize righteousness prioritize his kingdom prioritize his passion then shall thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks yea the almighty shall be thy defense he will rebuke the devourer for your sake and thou shall have plenty of silver for then shall thou have thy delight in the almighty and shall lift up thy face unto god 
Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. So you see, even after he has lifted you, you have covenant commitment. Thou shalt also then decree a thing, and it shall be established. You become a king unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. You will not walk in darkness again. When men are saying it's a casting down, then thou shalt say it's not possible. It is promotion ever for me. There is lifting up. And he shall save the humble person. He shall deliver the island of the innocent. And it, it's delivered by the pureness of your hands. When men are saying it is a casting down, when the economy is punishing them, you will arise and say it's my season of promotion. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, understand this covenant engineering. You can always be sure of your promotion. Be mad with the understanding of covenant principles. God is not a liar. He can never be. Who are you to intimidate him? Why should he lie to you? Align yourself with the covenant practices and you will be on your way to the top. Ever increasing promotion to promotion. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Don't be deceived by the religious mentality happening everywhere. It is not by stress. It is not by sweat. Stressless elevation. Constant elevation. Oh, let me give you some more scriptures. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. As you have heard from the, our big uncle, <laughs> Uncle Job, when men are saying, why am I not being promoted? Why are they sidelining me? Why are they promoting others on political ground? Why are they pro promoting on, the, on tribal ground? Why are they promoting? It is none of your business. Your business is with the Almighty. The one whose eye sees all things at once. Just be in line with him. And it is a lifting up season for you. Nothing can bring you down. He is the lifter up of your head. Come on, thank you, Jesus. So when you have covenant understanding, you will have covenant mentality, and then you will have covenant rest. You won't be perplexed, disturbed, having high blood pressure because of the sons of the devil. No. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Where is your mind? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Be careful for nothing, but by everything with prayers and supplication. Make your request of promotion known to God. They are connected to everybody. You are connected to the one that is connected to everybody. So who is going to win now? Now, the same one who is sidelining everybody, God will knock his head. He gets filled up in his head. He gets filled with the Holy Ghost. And he will promote you without knowing what he does. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Be careful for nothing. For nothing. Be careful for nothing. But by prayer and supplication, make all your requests known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your mind and the heart. It will keep it in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. With thanksgiving, it will keep your heart. The peace of God, not the peace of men. When they are saying peace, peace, then sudden destruction come upon them. But thou will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind? Don't look to men to help you. Look to God. And men has no choice. Men have no choice. Don't go and sell your bad right for promotion, for job. No! Stay in the covenant and everything will work out for your good. You don't need to bribe anybody. You don't need to open up your left for any idiot. No! Casting all your cares upon him for he careth for thee. Hand it over to him. Do your part. He will do his part. When you want to do God's job, that's when you, you get over overwhelmed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. Psalm 37 verse 25. I have been young and now I'm old. In my experience and journey in life, the psalmist says, Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor is see these children begging for bread. It is not possible. If this does not define anyone you think is righteous in and around your life or yourself, 
Something is wrong with the equation of your righteousness. Promotion is your covenant heritage. You are supposed to be moving from one level of glory to another level of glory. Psalm 3 verse 3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. Brothers and sisters, this is a covenant consequences. It is a must. Your head must continually be lifted. You are supposed to go from promotion to promotion. For the part of the just is like a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The part of the just is like a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. The part of the just, the righteous, the only one, the one who serves God, is like a shining light. His path is lit and it shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Your perfect day, I want to submit to you, should be that day. Your assignment is done on earth. There is no end to the brightness of your light. And then when your assignment is done on earth, you've handed it over to the next generation. But take it from me today. Your path is like a shiny light. The Lord shall increase you more and more. You and your children. You are supposed to be enlarging. Your capacity is supposed to be increasing every time. You are not supposed to be stagnant. It is not acceptable in the covenant. The Lord shall increase your greatness and comfort you on every side the lord shall increase my greatness psalm 71 verse 21 thou shalt increase my greatness you're already great your greatness continues to increase and comfort me on every side you are not supposed to be under pressure promotion supposed to be your continual testimony you can decide to move to another level anytime you so wish and you are so ready and you program yourself into that level. Let's understand the covenant principle, sons and daughters of God. We are too blessed to be stressed. We are too packaged to be demoted. We are too empowered to be prospered. You just need to understand the son of who you are and the covenant with which you have to do. Greatness, increase, expansion, promotion. It's normal. It's supposed to be your daily bread. If it is not happening, you need to find out where you are missing the equation, strike the balance, and you get the result. And this month of divine elevation, I am committed to bring you into balancing the equation. Why you must never beg for promotion in life. And why you must be in charge. And why you will never be below. So it's, impo it's important for you to pay serious attention and make sure you understand every statement from the holy spirit tonight revelation chapter 1 verse 6 and has made us kings and priests unto god we have been made kings and priests unto god thank you holy spirit i hope you are listening to what i'm talking about brothers and sisters Amen. his father to him be dominion forever and ever anointing to reign in life anointing to live and walk in dominion to be in charge all the days of your life is what we are looking at revelation chapter 5 verse 10 and has made us unto our god kings priests we you and i shall reign on the earth swallow it Jesus, by his conquest, has made us unto God kings and priests for one purpose, for us to reign on the earth. So, if you are born again and you are not reigning, you are underliving the covenant. In actual fact, you are a disappointment to the commonwealth of Jesus Christ. Where are you reigning? Are you reigning? Are you ruling? Are you in charge? Are you in dominion? If you are not as a child of God, brothers and sisters, you are underliving 
your existence. Last week we were looking at anointing to be the head only. And never be no, beneath. Never below. Never. Head only. <laughs> Under the old covenant. Head only. Under the new covenant. Head only. I know this is strange. But the earliest you are waking to the reality of who you are. As I will show you quickly. The best for all of us. Spirit of God we thank you. Are you here tonight or you've gone home? Thank you Holy Spirit. I want to take you on a journey into the supernatural realm right now to see why you must reign on the earth. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. So you and I have been born again to rule. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, hath he made us alive together with Christ. By grace ye are saved and has raised us up together and has made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father from whence he is ruling and dominating the earth, the kingdoms of this world by the instrumentality of the Holy Ghost. I've taught you before in that realm we are in him in this realm is in us so we are inseparable he is our habitation in that realm we are his habitation in this realm he represent us in purity in that realm we represent him in purity in this realm act of apostles chapter 5 verse 31 him has god exalted with his right hand to be prince, to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to israel and forgiveness of sin chapter 1 ephesians verse 20 which he wrought in Christ when he raised him together with us. Don't forget, we were raised together, we were crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live yet not us, but the life we now live, we live by the faith of the Son of God. It is no longer us that live, but Christ lives in us. It's a mystery. We live in Him, we move in Him, we have our being in Him. He lives in us, He moves in us, He has, a, he, he has His being in us. It's a mystery. Thank you, Jesus. When He raised Him from the dead. And set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all, mark the word all, principalities and powers. And might and dominion and every name that is named. And not only in this world but also in the, that which is to come. And has put all things including all devils under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to that church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all things. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we love you. I feel like singing, but the spirit of a singer is subject to the singer. Revelation, Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Jesus Christ is under nobody but God. Nothing else is above Jesus but God. Because Jesus humbled himself and submitted himself absolutely to the will of the Father. As a reward, the Father gave him the dominion of the universe. So as a woman, when you submit to the will of your husband, you will have dominion. We'll talk more about that in the Gracious Women's Fellowship. I've been trying to help you that submission is a weapon of dominion. The heart of the Father safely trusts in Jesus, so he handed over his estate to him. You will be the one in charge of the estate of your husband when you are submissive. Okay, continue to argue. Continue to fight. You know the consequence. So nothing is above Jesus. Jesus is in charge. He calls the shot over the universe but the real deal is where we are going now we are going to i want to show you something that happened in the spirit realm why you must never beg for dominion why during and after this service you can decide the next position you want to occupy and you will be there tomorrow is somebody here what i'm talking about you can decide who you want to be who you want to remove from office and they will be removed before the night fall because you are an authority under the highest authority and you share the throne with Jesus. Don't you get it? He has made us ears. If he has son, then ears and joint ears with Christ. All that my father has is mine. Confirmed. But what did God give to Jesus after Jesus has conquered for God? What do you think Jesus inherited? 
God has highly given him a name that is above every other name. That was what Jesus inherited. What did Jesus inherit? He inherited the throne of grace at the right hand of the Father. He inherited dominion. And the Bible says we are joint heirs. Romans 8 17 with him, with Christ. Everything the Father has is ours. The head is the Lord and the fullness thereof. It belongs to us. And then what did Jesus inherit? His name, his authority, his dominion, far above all principalities and powers. Every principality that has risen against you till now, they will poop you tonight if they can. And every human principalities, every human powers being used by the devil, they will be messed up tonight before the end of this service. You will begin to receive dominion good news in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Revelation 12, verse 6. Listen, follow me. I've established to you where you are seated with Christ now, right? Where, where Jesus is seated now. Nobody is higher than him. And if you are seated with him, you are in control with him. So if you are in control with him, you can determine your level per time in agreement with Jesus. So as long as as it is the perfect will of Jesus for you per time to occupy a position to enforce the kingdom of God and subdue the devil listen carefully and hear me well there is no human power there is no demonic power that can refuse it they may make noise they may make effort just relax no human power no demonic power can refuse the authority of Jesus all you need to do is negotiate with Jesus have a confirmation with Jesus is this what you want to do or you tell Jesus I want to dominate this place for you do I have your authority once he gives you the authority you go and rule in his name because it is your nature to rule you are born a king you can't be a slave no child of God should be a slave if you must be under anybody it must be a higher king within the kingdom because we're now working together no devil no you are not permitted under our constitution to be governed by the children of darkness it is an abomination for the righteous to bow at the gates of the wicked what are you talking about there are certain individuals you must sack tonight Everyone occupying your space, I uproot them in the name of Jesus and I plant you there. Hey, Revelation 12 verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her three, a thousand two hundred and three score days. And there was war in heaven. This is where I'm going. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels listen carefully and he prevailed not again pay attention neither was their place found anymore in heaven <laughs> it, it doesn't mean there's no space for them to occupy it simply means their position was overthrown last week i taught you how jesus won in the three realm he won in the earthly realm by demonstrating dominion over all evil and all oppression of the devil and when he shed the body, he went into hell. He won under the earth. And that's where he got the keys of hell and became the Lord over death and hell and Tartarus and under the sea. And then he had another dimension to win because <laughs> Genesis chapter 1 clearly shows us what Adam was made to rule over. Come on, child of God. Please hear me. You, you have never heard this before. I know you've never heard it before. But today, you must understand who you are and what it means to be born again. Stop begging for life. Decide the life you want and begin to live it. The children of darkness can wake up tomorrow and say they will remove you as CEO. And when you don't have fortification, they succeed. They can just decide it. He's not qualified, but he gets the position anyway by provoking spiritual power over you not anymore any child of god under the influence of my voice that is being ruled over by sons of darkness by ruled over by the sons of the devil even if you think you are not qualified to occupy that position but this person is ruling over you right now if i be a man of god 
I sack him, I uproot them now, and I bring the righteous man to rule in the name of Jesus. It's unacceptable, and you will testify. Thank you, G. Verse 8. There was no more found, place found for the devil in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil, Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels was, were cast out out with him brother and sister where were they where were they this happened after the resurrection of jesus christ <laughs> how do i know watch the, the the teachings on understanding and maximizing the power of resurrection there are a lot of things for you to learn we've got a long way to go tonight we need to crack this so that you can sit on your throne that you are born to occupy the devil has been deceiving the whole world from a dimension and when Jesus ascended into heaven, we're going to get there shortly. There can't be two. There can be. There can't be two kings there. <laughs> On earth, he dealt with them. He spoiled principalities and powers and triumphed over them. In hell, he dominated them and got the keys of hell and of death. So he needed to conquer them in the third realm, which is the heavenly realm, and he did. Verse ten. But note verse nine. He has been deceiving the whole world. Don't make mistake about the person we are talking about. The Bible gave you clarity. He's the same guy that deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden. And I've taught you before how many people were sent out of the Garden, Adam and Eve. Was the serpent sent out? There was no record for it. So why is he now being cast down? He's cast down from where? He's cast down from a higher realm into a lower realm, which is the head. Where was Adam in the Garden of Eden? When Adam fell, where was he cast into? Into the lower realm, the earth. So now, there was an exchange now. Because the last Adam, Jesus Christ, conquered the devil. And then, there was a reverse. We'll, we'll get there shortly. Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation, strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser, note this statement, of our brethren, is cast down which accused them before our god day and night this guy was operating from the court of heaven before this time this guy had a throne that he stole <laughs> he was sitting on a throne oh! you didn't hear that i'm telling you brothers and sisters that devil stole a throne from adam and from that throne when he stole that throne he changed the government. He changed the constitution. And he set up a throne of accusation and judgment. And when God initiated the nation of Israel, the, the, the law could not ultimately avert the government of the devil on earth. That devil was still using the law against the children of Israel and against God. I will show you sh shortly. Because he was the legitimate owner of the title deeds of the earth. Because somebody exchange his destiny adam by the deception of his wife exchange his glorious destiny and throne for the devil let's read on brothers and sisters this will blow you away today but it's important for you to understand why you must you need to put this to practice tonight and demonstrate power and exercise dominion i want to show you why the devil cannot refuse your authority i want to show you why i said and i know that whatever you want to be, you shall be with the approval of Jesus Christ. He was accusing them before God day and night. Mark you, he was before God because he was the prosecutor in the court of heaven. Adam was supposed to be judging to the favor of his children because he's, the, he's supposed to be the father of all souls. There was no way Adam was, was going to be judging us. But because he lost that throne and this guy was jealous of Adam, this guy hates humanity. This guy hates God with his angels. So he had a cabinet. And his cabinet were ruling the world with him from that higher realm. Oh my goodness, you didn't get that. Who caught that? <laughs> and all God was waiting for was the Messiah to come. To come and reverse everything. Thank you, Jesus. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Why should heaven rejoice? Because they will stop seeing this guy forever. They've had enough of him. And by... <laughs> Woe to the inhabitants of the earth 
and of the sea. For the devil is come down, is thrown down now unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. Listen, and when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, where was he cast into everybody? The earth. The devil is here. Because he's a spirit, you can't see him. He's not hiding anywhere. When God open your eyes, you will see him. That's why he's called the prince of the power of the air. Because he's in the air. A dimension. The earth has both the 3D dimension, physical, and the invisible dimension. And you, as a child of God, you are supposed to operate in all the dimensions of the earth. Including where the devil is blindfolding you that is, he is. He persecuted the woman which brought forth the mancha. This is metaphorically talking about it nation of Israel. That's why Israel is going to fight war until Jesus comes. Because the devil is angry with that nation that gave birth to the Messiah. Luke 19 verse 13. And he called his ten servant and delivered up ten pounds unto them and said unto them, make use of it until I come. King James Version says occupy, be in charge until I come. Brothers and sisters we have been called to dominate. What do I mean? We have been called to rule. We are royalty by default in christ jesus he that is born of a king is king god did not give birth to paupers god meant all his children to be rulers then you begin to see the disparity we are talking about thank you jesus because the mandate is we shall reign on the earth thank you jesus and last week i gave you about nine teasers to reign you need to recognize you must reign why you must reign recognize who you are reigning for and who you are reigning over recognize that there has been illegal rulers and reigners before you find out if you have all it takes to overthrow them to make them your subject once you have your equation balanced take counsel to strategize for war to put them under your feet number seven you get down to that war number eight you take all of them captive you subdue them or the previous ruler and then number nine you put the kingdom facility in place to enforce the will of god where you are sent and approved to go and reign. So there was a ruler of the universe before the devil. You know, I did not say the ruler of the earth. I said the ruler of the universe. <laughs> Holy Spirit, help me. Everything God created in Genesis chapter 1. He created them. He renovated the earth for Adam. We already taught about the civilization before Adam. So you go get the teaching in the catalog. All the renovation you are seeing because this world is standing out of water and in water is of old. Because the damn world perished by water. And God renovated this world for Adam to rule. But he has to govern it from the Garden of Eden. Now listen. Statistics showed us that Adam was about 30 years old when he was sent out of the Garden of Eden. That should let you know why Jesus has to appear at the age of 30. Because whatever has been done in the realm of the spirit unto Herod must follow the sequential reverse to right that wrong. It's a spiritual law. Thank you, Jesus. You know, God he hid the identity of Jesus for 30 years. <laughs> Praise God. So there was a ruler before the devil in the garden. What do I mean? Genesis 1 26 and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion let them be the king over the fish of the sea over the fowls of the air and over all the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping things that creepeth upon the earth verse 28 and God blessed them and God said unto them be fruitful and multiply replenish the earth subdue it have dominion subdue so for for god to be telling adam to subdue it means there were entities that were already against the operation of god and he said have dominion subdue and have dominion over the fish over the sea over the fowls of the air over every living thing that moved upon the head you know the story in genesis 3 how the devil tricked eve and eve went to whatever she did to her husband <laughs> not today <laughs> made the guy eat and you know that eating is a metaphoric statement it's not apple it's not guava it's not granadilla and the serpent is not a snake the serpent is a title it's talking about a being a powerful being that was very subtle than all the cattle of the feed cattle of the feed is not talking about cows it's talking about 
powerful being. So there were cattle of the feed. And these cattle of the field, we have studied them when we are studying the Elohim and the sons of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hey, thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. Chapter 3, verse 20, 21. Unto Hadam and to his wife did the Lord God made coats of skins. Coats of skin. That tells you Adam didn't have coats of skins before then. So that's why you will hear flesh and blood has not revealed because flesh and blood is a lower grade of humanity after the fall. And that's why this flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's why this flesh and blood is a body of sin. And that's why we are waiting for the redemption of our body. And we will be transformed into the same image. So we are wearing this coat here as a suit on the mission field. Let's not go deeper than that. Just understand the basics today. Thank you, Jesus. If you need more insight, get the teachings in the catalog. And clothed them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever tree of life is another metaphor therefore the lord god sent him forth from the garden of eden to till the ground from whence he was taken so he drove out the man he was chased out of the garden and he placed at the east of the garden of eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life when we're dealing with the doctrines of hell on sunday we already spoke about the tree of life and now we are going to have access to that tree again so the moment adam was chased out of the garden a new king began to rule who was he the devil <laughs> how do we know the scripture is very clear when jesus came he announced john 13 31 now is the judgment of this world now shall the prince of this world be cast out so jesus is saying by my responsibility and the warfare i'm fighting the ultimate is that the prince over this world the governor the president the one in charge of this world shall be cast out cast out from where from his throne where he is ruling and jesus was making an announcement that the judgment over the earth was being prepared because he has conquered iniquity i taught you in the in one of the series why jesus could, when i was teaching why jesus could not send those demons in the madman of gadarene to the abyss was because he was yet to be glorified he didn't have access to hell he didn't have access to the key of hell and death he was not the one controlling the hell and death then Please save it. If you need more insight, get the teaching. There are a lot of things you need to understand. John 14, 30. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world, the second time, Jesus was addressing the devil as the prince over the world. When did he become the prince? When Adam sold his birthright. <laughs> John 16, 11. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. So Jesus is making an announcement in chapter 12. He said, he shall be cast out in chapter 16 is telling you the judgment has already been passed over the earth but i have three warfare to do i have to do another one in hell there will be another one in heaven first corinthians chapter 2 verse 6 how be healed we speak wisdom among them that are perfect yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that come to naught apostle paul was using this terminology to indicate that the prince of the power of the air now is no longer the prince of this world he has now become the prince of the power of the air so when they were talking about the princes of this world he's talking about the princes of the world system not the same world that talking about the earth of which god so loved that he gave his only begotten son unto it this world was loved is loved by god for man to inhabit and to control and jesus has to pay the price to gain back this world this earth because God made the earth for man. After the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the devil no longer answered to the prince of this world because he has been dethroned. But he still retained the prince of the powers of darkness. So the devil also told us that he was the governor over the earth. Matthew chapter 4. When you read from verse 8 to verse 10. And then you read Luke chapter 4. But let's take the Luke account which is more detailed. Thank you Jesus. Are you getting blessed child of God? We give you praise. Thank you Holy Spirit. Verse 5, And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of this world in a moment 
Mark you all the kingdoms of this world. All the kingdoms of this world. The various oppressions of humanity. And the devil said unto him, All this power. So he was showing him kingdoms. The kingdom of engineering, the kingdom of nursing, the kingdom of agriculture, the kingdom of finance, the kingdom of forestry, the kingdom of environmental management, whatever kingdom. In, the devil was saying the powers of those kingdoms. Meaning he appointed those who are governing those kingdoms. Because the kingdom belonged to him. Please, where I got to, please listen carefully. And he said, and the glory of them. So the kingdoms has their respective powers and the kingdom has its respective glory. And Satan is saying, everyone ruling in those kingdoms were submissive to him. Thank you, Jesus. You didn't get that. <laughs> and he said, what a profound statement. This one, the devil did not lie. For that, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give. Brothers and sisters, wake up. When the devil was the governor of this world, he decide who should be the president of each nation. He decide who should be the captain of any industry. He decide and put only those who worship him in power. How dare you in your lifetime with your naked eye allow Satan to still be dictating over your nation, over your organization. Who to rule? See your life now. Cry. You are so distracted crying for bread and water where you are supposed to be in charge i want this to sink what level of ignorance and ignoramus has allowed the church the ecclesia to give the devil so much liberty to still be operating dominating humiliating frustrating christians in the kingdom that no longer belongs to him the kingdoms of this world has now belonged to become the kingdoms of our god and fear not little flock it is your father's pleasure to give you the kingdom the kingdoms of this world now belongs to us it is our covenant heritage it's part of the inheritance we have in christ jesus and we are saddled with the responsibility to dominate and subdue be in charge put things in order how could we have allowed sons of the devil to still be governors, president, commissioners, ministers, captains of industries? How could you allow Satan, children, to be dominating your community, in your school? Something fundamentally is wrong and it is fundamentally ignorance. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. How? We need to wake up and take our place. We are now the governor for Jesus. We are kings. We are to rule. We are born to rule. We are born to dominate. Dominion is back to us. We are to put all the cattle of the field and the fowls of the air in subjection. The will of God must be done wherever we are. No son of the devil can determine your promotion. It is your exclusive choice. You can decide to be whosoever you choose to be. You can remove whosoever you, should, you choose to remove when you understand the technology that I'm showing you. Now listen. The devil says, I give it to whomsoever I will. Now Jesus, Revelation 11, 15. Now the kingdoms of this world, the same one the devil was bragging about, has become the kingdoms of our God. Reverse it. Jesus also now is the one that determines who to give the power and the glory of each kingdom to. But the children he wants to give the kingdom to, they are beggarly mentality. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we give you praise. And he said, if thou will worship me, all shall be thine. The devil was telling Jesus the equation of how people get dominion in life. The one you worship if he is in power, he will give you dominion. If you go open your leg to the CEO, you get some benefits. If you pay obeisance to the general manager, he can fix you in a position that you are not qualified for. That's the game being played in the world. In your very eyes, in the kingdoms of this world that has become your kingdom, because it is your father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. 
the same kingdoms of this world that the God of heaven has given to you in your korokoro eyes like this you allow the sons and daughters of the devil to be in charge it's an aberration these things ought not to be it's a disaster so the devil dethroned Adam to occupy the throne to determine who rules the world and he decides who he give the power and the dominion to and he set up a throne of judgment where he's accusing the sons of men the sons of adam day and night thank you holy spirit and when jesus came jesus conquered him the last adam according to the promise of god in genesis chapter 3 that the seed of the woman will bruise your head and you will bruise his heel the heel of jesus was bruised on the cross the head of the devil was also bruised thank you jesus and first corinthians chapter 15 verse 45 and so it is written the first man adam was made a living soul the last adam was made a quickening spirit 47 the first man is of the earth earthy the second man is the lord from heaven so jesus transformed from adam to a new creature and that's that's why the bible says if any man be in christ he is a new creature all things are passed away behold all things have become new you have no connection with adam get the teaching on the catalog the last adam that's the title it will help you to understand so the bible says the kingdoms of this world has now become the kingdoms of our god okay before i get there Re revelation 5 2 to 6 and i saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof which book is this one i call it the title deeds of the earth and no man in heaven nor in earth neither under the earth was able to open the book neither to look therein which mean men there are men in heaven there are men on earth and there are men under the earth <laughs> no man was able to open the book or to look thereon and i wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book neither to look thereon so the book is a book that only a man must read <laughs> and that book has been kept for ancient time nobody has been qualified to read it and one of the elders said unto me weep not behold the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david had prevailed he, he had conquered to open the book what did he do and to lose the seven seals thereof and i beheld and lo in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god sent forth into all the earth jesus prevailed prevailing means he fought and he conquered and the aftermath of that is in Reve revelation 11 15 and the seventh angel sounded and there was great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world that the devil was bragging about in matthew 4 and luke 4 has now become the kingdoms of jesus wherever you are walking is no longer the kingdom of the devil as long as your destiny is associated with that dimension of humanity you are supposed to rule there thank you jesus and I blow a trumpet in Zion today to awaken the soul and the spirit of the sons of God all over the world. Arise and take your place in the kingdoms of men. Because the kingdoms of men is now our kingdom. And no man can tell you what to do anymore. You tell them what to do. The only man qualified to tell you what to do is the one that is above you in the realm of the spirit. No son of the devil can dictate to you anymore. Take charge. There are people you need to fire in your place of work and bring in the righteous leaders there. And you need to upgrade yourself. Take your place in destiny, brothers and sisters. The kingdoms of this world has become the kingdoms of our God. And the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. So the new man ascended back to his throne. You know, Jesus ascended to heaven, 1 Peter 3, 22, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers, listen carefully, be made subject unto him. They will do whatever he says. And don't forget you are seated with him. They will do whatever you say as long as approved by Jesus. Revelation 3, 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Ephesians 1.20 Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world but also in that which is to come. And has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all philippians chapter 2 verse 8 where 
and being found in the fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore god also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven of things in earth and of things underneath the earth nothing disobeys jesus so nothing disobeys you whatever jesus has sanctioned for you nothing disobeys you and every tongue should confess that jesus is lord to the glory of god the father matthew 28 17 and when they saw him they worshiped him but some doubted and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power all exousia all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations no devil dares you. You put them where they belong. They are illegal marauders in this kingdom. Wherever you see them, subdue them, imprison them. I am I agree with you tonight. That man in your mind that has been harassing you because you don't know who you are. That one that is giving you heartache and hypertension. Today, I sack him in the name of Jesus. As long as you are on the right stand, in the perfect will of God, it's the place where God wants you to be. No son of the devil will sop over you anymore. You are born a king. You are royalty. No devil. I release angels all over the world right now to begin to exchange thrones. And the sons of God all over the world are awakening to begin to occupy their thrones in the name of Jesus. When Jesus ascended to heaven according to Psalm 24, he declared to you how he was able to ascend to heaven. He told you no man has ascended to heaven at any time, but he made it. He said the Lord mighty in battle. He won, he conquered. Who is the king of glory? The king of glory, great and mighty in battle. So the devil had to be cast down from the garden of Eden and Jesus had to ascend to the throne that God set for him at his own right hand. And from there, all principalities and powers all angels and all devils became subject to him. So the devil was cast out exactly the way Adam was cast out. And humanity was reinstated. God restored the glory of man back to man. So no devil is governing here anymore. They are in the air. And in the air you subdue them. If they trespass, you send them to the abyss. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Revelation 2.13 I know thy works. And when thou, where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou oldest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days where Antipas, my faithful Matthias, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. So you saw the devil was dwelling on earth and is still dwelling here. In the days of the seven churches in Asia, the devil was dwelling in Pergamos. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. And right now, brothers and sisters, the throne of judgment has been dismantled. Jesus pulled down that stronghold and the throne of grace has been set up. <laughs> Colossians 2.13 Thank you, Holy Spirit. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh at e quickened together with him, having forgiven your sins. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. Blotting out the handwritings of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way and nailed it to his cross. Jesus abolished the covenant, the old covenant to establish the new. Verse 15, having spoiled principalities and power, he disarmed them. They lost their dominion over the earth. He made a shoe of them, he disgraced them, triumphing over them in it. There is no day the devil will overthrow Jesus. It can never happen. So when you are on the Lord's side, you are always on the winning side. And you will always be in dominion when you balance the equation of continuous promotion thank you jesus we give you praise so the law of sin and death was abolished and the law of grace was enacted romans chapter 5 therefore as by one man sin entered into the world and began to rule and death reigned by sin and death passed unto all men for all have sinned nevertheless death reigned from adam to moses what is death the ministration of evil was death it was raining. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. All evil you see, sickness, accident, war, that is death raining. Even over those who had not seen in the similitude of Adam, transgression, he being the figure of him that was to come. So the throne of grace has replaced the throne of death. So death was raining because he was sending death from his throne that he stole from Adam into the earth. 
Romans 5, 21, that as sin had reigned unto death, so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus our Lord. So the same way the devil was ruling the world with affliction is the same way we are supposed to rule for Jesus with good works, healing, deliverance, prosperity. Are you hearing what I'm talking about, child of God? <laughs> In partnership with the angels of God, wherever Jesus sent us, we are supposed to enforce the kingdom of God there. Righteousness, peace, joy, as against death, envy, strife, affliction, cancer, tuberculosis. When you go into the hospital, cure everybody that is there. When you know your authority, your job, where God has appointed you, whatever be your career, your profession, whatever God has called you to do, is to enforce the kingdom of God there. He sent me to raise him politics, politician, businessmen, professional women as custodians of the destinies of their children and the husband he has given to them and fivefold ministers of God as frontline soldiers of Christ for the purpose of subduing the devil and enforcing the will of God on earth while we will accelerate the return of Jesus Christ while fostering the unity of the body of Christ. That's what he sent us to do in Jesus' global ecclesia. This is not a joke and that's why I keep investing God into your life. For you to come to this understanding that you are supposed to be in charge. You are a light that lightened darkness. When you appear, darkness must disappear. Why has darkness been subduing you? Wake up! Romans 5, 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned, by one much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one jesus christ brothers and sisters verse 18 therefore as by offense of one judgment to condemnation come upon all men even so by the righteousness of one the free gift unto justification of life come upon all men so the finished work of jesus christ give us gives us authority over all the works of darkness for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinner so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Listen to verse, verse 20. More so the law enter that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So grace is the one reigning now unto eternal life. Sin was reigning unto death. Grace is the one reigning now. Because the throne that was set up in the garden was the throne of sin. And from that throne, sin entered the world and effected death on humanity. So a new throne has been set. The system of the devil, the government of the devil has been dismantled. And by that system, life is to come to the world from the throne of grace. And that's why the Bible says we need to come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need we are the physical angels of god here we are the physical emissaries of god here we are working with the invisible angels and our job is to minister life to this world is to bring healing into this world our job is to take charge our job is to enforce righteousness peace and joy everywhere we go the same way the children of the devil are enforcing death everywhere they go you are supposed to undo their death sack them remove them Put the righteous in power. Put yourself in power. Dominate. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing the true child of God? Glory to Jesus. Let us begin to draw the curtain in a grand style tonight. As I want to show you a very coordinating scriptures for you to know that the devil no longer rules here. The Bible clearly states that in John chapter 12 verse 31, John chapter 14 verse 30. And John 16 verse 11, the devil was addressed as the king, of the, as the prince of this world, which means he was the supreme ruler over this realm because of what is told from Adam. And I've also established to you how Jesus regained back the kingdoms of this world. And Jesus is now, according to the scripture, the head of all things to the church and much more. He is the prince of this world now. Jesus is the prince and he has put us here as the ecclesia as his governing agent because the government the government is now upon his shoulder and now we his body his brothers and sisters are the one he has mandated to rule this place with him within our time appointed time per generation 
Okay, let me prove that to you scripturally. So when you read in the scripture that the Bible talks about the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, and the Lord of Lords, the small letter kings and the small letter lords is not the king in your village. He's talking about us, the ecclesia, the brothers and sisters to Jesus Christ, because he is the king over us. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the firstborn begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. Remember, we are reigning on earth because he has made us kings and priests unto our God. And we are reigning on the earth. We are reigning for him. We are here to enforce his will. And this is the bedrock of our ministry. So Jesus is the prince of this world now because he is the captain over all of us. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Therefore, nothing should go wrong in this world again without our allowing it. Only the will of Jesus must be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's why we are here. And if that be the case, which actually is the case, then you cannot be a beggar where you are supposed to be the ruler. It definitely then means automatically when you understand who you are, why you are, and you are under the authority of Jesus Christ, Promotion, enlargement, elevation will constantly be yours as the Lord judges it for you in accordance to his perfect will. Your primary job is to always be in the center of his will, enforcing his will and subduing the devil and you will move from glory to glory, promotion to promotion, elevation to elevation. But when you don't know this, that's why you feel threatened by the sons of wickedness. When you are in the perfect will of God, Always know that the Lord is on your side and you are here not to do your will but his will. You are guaranteed constant elevation promotion. And your job is to subdue anything trying to harass you, to intimidate you, to work contrary to the will of God for you. Any system that is working against God's will being done, your job is to pull them down, cast down the imagination. Cast down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought unto the obedience of Christ. And don't forget to take vengeance in the name of the Lord and put the devils that are involved in the situations under subjection. Send them to the abyss and place a judgment upon the human instrument unto salvation. That is how to resist the devil and he will flee from you. And the glory of God will continue to manifest in your life. And you will move from promotion to promotion. To God be the glory. So grace is now reigning unto life. Grace is in charge now. That's why God is able to make all grace abound towards us. That's why you need to be faithful stewards of his grace. We're gonna, I'm going to do more justice to this next week edition by the grace of God. But I just want to re-emphasize to you that grace is the one in charge unto ministration of eternal life. And eternal life is to enforce the will of God. Eternal life is to enforce the kingdom of God, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Wherever you go, you are minister of the grace of God. You are agent of the grace of God. That is why you need to assess more grace to keep on rising. The higher the grace you have, the more you are able to minister grace wherever you go. No more death is allowed. So grace is the answer to death, ministration of the works of the devil. So from grace to grace, from glory to glory, from promotion to promotion, elevation to elevation, by the grace of God. So all you need is grace. Ascend to the throne of grace. Obtain mercy. Find the grace to help move to the next level. You can consciously make this happen for yourself you can consciously demonstrate the power of god by promotion you can wake up one money and set up promotion equation for yourself and walk yourself into the next level by the grace of god 
Once you understand this thing that I'm teaching you, so I encourage you go over this teaching, mark it well, and begin to set yourself up for promotion to promotion as a way of demonstration of spirit and power. Take it up as a responsibility. Announce to the universe, I'm going to the next level. And the grace of God will take me there. Because I'm representing grace. And grace for promotion shall work it out for you. It never fails. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. Hebrews chapter 4, 16. So anywhere you see anybody ruling for the devil, it is illegal. Because the ecclesia is the one that has the mandate of Jesus to govern the kingdom that he has possessed. The kingdoms of this world doesn't belong to the devil anymore. He is illegal. Wherever you see any of his children operating, sack them! We have been given the power to do it. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. In my name shall ye cast out devil. So when you see devil ruling, cast him out! There are presidents you need to sack. There are ministers, there are directors, there are PSCs. You need to sack them. Show some power. Stop talking English, my friend. The things you go cry about, you are supposed to look at these people face to face and say, I'm not careful to answer you in this matter. If you remain in this office tomorrow, the kingdom of this world doesn't belong to God. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Are you still here? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So grace is the one reigning now. That's why you need to find grace to help you in the time of need. What you need to reign is the grace of God. Whatever problem you want to solve, there is a grace that is needed to solve that problem. You need to find that grace by ascending to the throne of grace, justify the need for that grace, and the king of grace, Jesus, will not deny you. He's able to make all grace abound towards you. Enough is enough of living a beggarly element where you are supposed to be ruling and reigning, brothers and sisters. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Anointing to rule and reign in life begins with the revelation of who you are. It begins with the revelation of what Jesus has already conquered for you. And who you are, that you are a king. Added to that is the revelation that the devil is now under you. You are ascended. He is down here. So you rule from the throne of grace. And no devil can refuse the authority that comes from the throne of grace. What do you want to rule over tonight? What has been ruling over you? That's why you need to keep yourself pure. You need to keep yourself in the will of God. And the wicked one can never touch you. As long as you remain in holiness and you walk by faith based on the revelation of the truth. You walk in dominion. You are not here to do your will. You are here to do the will of Christ. That's why when you are interceding, you are interceding in accordance to the will of God. And the moment Jesus approves any case for you, it's a done deal. What do you need to do? You just issue a decree. And you don't even need to say it twice. Because a king does not need to repeat himself. And once you decree, don't always expect instantaneous manifestation. See things from the position of authority. What you have just said. Has it been approved for you in the court of heaven? If the answer is yes, go and rest. You've spoken as a king and that's, that settles it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I stand in the authority of Jesus tonight who sent me with this word to you. Whatever has been usurping over you are giving up on you now with the authority of Jesus. And what has been suppressing you are eliminated permanently. Your throne in destiny is open for you and I command you to be seated there. Everyone occupying your throne illegally, I frustrate them out tonight. And I ask God of heaven, send 12 legions of angels now to attend to everybody's case here. And let there be speedy manifestation of enthronement for everyone that deserve it. In the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you will give a taste as a confirmation of what you sent me to your people tonight. Let us have testimony of mysterious enthronement and dominion for your children speedily in the name of Jesus. Of continuous greatness, expansion, increase, advancement. Anyone being suppressed, you saw, today receive liberation. Every ceiling upon your head is hereby removed. Rise in the name of Jesus. Shine for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you.